Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to lock a specific field or fields once a value has been entered in your Microsoft Access database. This is a question I get once in a while in various forms, but basically you've got a field, like let's say credit limit, and if there's a value there already, you don't want the user to be able to click on there and change it, right? It's locked. I'm trying to click right now and, and type stuff and I can't. But if I go to a record that doesn't have anything there, the user can enter something. Okay. And then once they leave it and come back to it, now it's locked. So you can't change it. Okay. So let's see how we can do that. Before we get started, this is a developer level video, which means we need a little bit of VBA. If you have not watched my intro to VBA video, go watch it now. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know about VBA to get started. We're going to use an if then statement in our code. So you need to know how to do that. Go watch this video if you've never used an if then before. Need to know what null is and how to check for a null value using is null. And the star of the show today is the on current event. Yeah, I know this, this slide isn't as pretty as the other ones. This is an older video. But uh, the on current event is an event that runs when you move from record to record or when a record or when a form opens and you get the first record. And this is the guy that's going to actually make everything work. So go watch this video. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. I'll put links down below. You can click on to go watch this stuff. So go watch it and come on back. I'll wait for you. All right, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. And I've got a customer form and on that customer form, pick a field, any field. I don't care. Let's do credit limit. We'll say if credit limits got something in it already, then you can't change it. So I'm going to delete a couple of records. So let's delete that one before we put the code in, right? Let's delete that one. Now my tab order is kind of weird. It goes from credit limit up to notes. So that's just me hitting tab and we'll leave one in there and then we'll, we'll delete that. Okay, so all the guys that don't have a credit limit, we can put some in there. Okay, if it's got something already, it's going to be locked. Now, when do we determine whether or not to lock that particular text box? Well, we're going to use the on current event for that. The on current event runs when you move from record to record or when the form opens and loads the first record. And that's the perfect time to see if the credit limit is null or not. So let's go to design view. All right. Let's open up the properties for the form, which is where the ruler bars meet that little box right there. Double click. Boop, there it is. Right. Property sheet for the form. Go to events and find on current. It's the first one. Click on dot, dot, dot. That'll open up your VBA editor. And right in here is where we're going to put our code. So we're going to check to see if credit limit is null. So we're going to say if is null credit limit, then do some stuff. What are we going to do? We're going to lock the credit limit field, right? But if it's null, then we want to unlock it. So we're going to say credit limit dot locked. That's the property locked equals false, right? It's null. So you can edit it. In other words, unlock it. Otherwise else, it's not null. We're going to say credit limit dot locked equals true. And if, all right, if credit limits got nothing in it, and if it's null, Locked is false. Okay, let the user put something in there. Otherwise, there's something in there. Lock it. And that'll run in the current event, the form current event. Save that. Come back over here. I'm going to close my form. Always close and reopen your forms, people. All right, there we go. All right, so this is null right now. So I should be able to put something in there. Perfect. All right, let's move off of it. And now let's move back to it and try to edit that. I can't, I'm typing right now, nothing's happening because the, the field is locked because there's something in there. When the record loaded in the on current event, it noticed that that had something in there and it locked itself. Now, it'd be nice if I had some kind of a visual cue to tell me that that was locked. Maybe let's change the background color. We can do that with one more line of code. Well, two, two technically, you, can, you put two in there, right? Credit limit dot back color all right if it's unlocked leave it white so we'll say equals vb white that's a special code for white okay and then down here we'll say v, uh, credit limit dot back color equals 
Um, what do you want? Red, there's VB red, there's VB blue, there's VB green. Uh, I want like gray, like a light gray. Now there is no VB gray. So for that, I like to use the RGB function, red, green, blue. And you could specify the three individual components, right? 255, 255, 255, 255, like that. That's white. If you switch it to zero, 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 that's black, All right? Let's go, let's go with like a light gray. So we're gonna bring the color down from white just a little bit, maybe 200, 200 like that. All right, that should give us like a light gray. And I usually put it like over here, like light gray. Cause someone looking at it's gonna go, what does that mean? And now if we come back to our database and go to a field that's locked, look at that. It shows up gray in the background. See that? I don't know, it's just kind of neat. Now you can alternately lock this value as soon as it's typed in. If I put a 500 in there and hit tab, all right, my, my focus moved up to my notes field. Notice the record is still dirty, okay? And it's still able to be edited at this point, okay? Because the, the user hasn't saved the record and moved off of it. That doesn't happen until you leave the record and come back to it or close the form and reopen it. So they can still edit it. If you want to lock it at that point too, you could put something in the after update event. I don't know if I would, because then if, you know, anytime the user makes a mistake, then they gotta say, okay, call the boss and say, I made a mistake. I should have typed in 2,500. I accidentally typed into, you know what I'm saying? So I would just stick with this. That's, that's the way I like it. But if you want to throw something in the after update event, there's a video on that too. It's another similar event. You do the same thing. And of course, none of this matters if you don't have your database secured, right? If people can just go into the tables and change whatever they want to change, then your forms don't really matter whatever kind of events you have in there. So go watch this video on simple security. It'll show you the basics of what you need to do to lock down your database to prevent most users from getting in there and making changes that you don't want them to. And if you really want to lock down your database, I got this thing called a security seminar where I show you how to like seriously, like professionally lock it down as best as access can be. And uh, finally, how do you get it so that you can edit that if you want to? Well, if you got like a manager, you can make a manager form, you know, using the tips that I show you in the security seminar and stuff, you can make a separate form that manager's got to log on. Or you could do something just as simple as, you know, double clicking here and asking for a password. You can use a simple input box. I'll show you how to do that in this video, right? Enter a manager password, type it in, and it unlocks the field. But that, in a nutshell, is how you can use a little bit of VBA to lock a specific field once a value has been entered into it. That is your fast tip for today. Live long and prosper, folks. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming 
As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.